Greetings once again, my fellow Star Trek fans, and I welcome you to another Star Trek video. Yes, I'm a little obsessed with Star Trek. Let's have a little bit of fun. Now, I've shown you guys over the years the S951 from AMT, and um, I'd like to think that I've shown you just about every angle or all the information when it pertains to that kit. Um, the only thing I don't have yet is the original S951 that was released in 1966. That one's a little bit hard to get, especially in the shape that I'm looking for, but we'll get it eventually. But today, what I want to show you is the S951, but this is a different version. And before I get into what makes this particular one so special, um, let's do a little bit of information on this one first. Now, the original S951, the box was vertical. And then, it had gone the same size, but it went sideways, which we called the long box release. Incidentally, it was this iconic photograph that they put on the long box. And I just love this photo. You can see the moon in the background, and it's orbiting Earth. What I always perceive to be Earth. And see, that date is 1968. It was originally released in 1966. And you can see the S951 on the side. And it's got special features, USS Enterprise, Star Trek AMT. It was before Ertl took over, or they merged with them. USS Enterprise spaceship model kit. Look at, you can see Mr. Spock, the first officer, Captain James T. Kirk, the commander, and we have the scale key, the Enterprise. This is where the bridge is, the primary hull, the main phasers, the propulsion units. And you can see the scale on the bottom right hand corner. Special decals included contains names and numbers of all the ships, build the entire fleet. Both ends of the box are the same. We have that S951. And looking at the other side of the box, these exciting AMT Star Trek and other space kits are available at your favorite hobby center. Fun to assemble hobby kit for modelers eight years through adult. And these are pretty fun. Let's see, I've shown you the long box original release of the exploration set. I've shown you the long box release, the 1968, that is, of the Enterprise. Um, I haven't really, I don't really know a lot about the planetary UFO, maybe something that could be an interesting future project. I've shown you the original release of the Galileo 7. Um, I don't have the Mr. Spock as of yet, so I don't have that one. And we're working on the Klingon alien battle cruiser and I have shown you the long box release on that and there's nothing on the back so what makes this one so special well it may not be well I don't know if it increases the value of it but ever since I was a kid I had wanted one because I built several of these models through the years and of course I massacred all of them but in the late 70s early 80s, I had noticed I had gotten one that was actually blue. And I assumed that the release just had all of the parts that were blue. But I had come to find out that I had never found another blue one after that. Um, I was going on eBay, and they have quite a few of these model kits listed. And when I looked, I saw that the parts were blue. So, I asked that you sit back, relax, enjoy a cup of coffee, or whatever you're drinking, and let me take you and share my childhood with you. We're going to go back to when I had the blue plastic. Incidentally, I did the whole thing in blue. I didn't paint it white just because I love the blue. So why don't we take it over to the desk? There'll be more light, and I'll show you everything that's involved in this kit. Okay, we're going to take a look at this fantastic AMT USS Enterprise model kit. 
But what we're going to do first is I'm going to read you some information on the Enterprise herself. She was launched in 2245, and the original illustrious starship USS Enterprise NCC-1701. She was built in the San Francisco Yards orbiting Earth. The Constitution-class spaceship was previously captained by Robert April and Christopher Pike. Eventually, Captain James T. Kirk would take command. The ship arguably gained its status as the most famous space exploration vessel in history due to its historic five-year mission, a massive lower deck which included main engineering and shuttle bays. The ship's armament included phaser banks and photon torpedoes. So that's up until the refit. So this is the Enterprise. Let's see if I can get that picture. Nope. I, I can't just get the photo. So, without further ado, let me show you guys what's in its fantastic model. Let's put this to the side. And right off the bat, these were in their own plastic bag. These are the, the sensors and the bridge. These are cross green pieces. And one of them came off the tree. Now you can see the one on the bottom. You can tell it's a sensor dish with the little, the little nub. And you may or may not know, but that little nub is actually the phaser cannon, where the phasers come from. And we have the top, which is the bridge. All right. So this one is still sealed. Um, I want to show you it. So let's, before we get to that, let's check out the instructions and the decal sheet. Now, <clears throat> when they switched over from the lights and they took the lights out of the kit, some of the special features were you could do the entire fleet. And this one is an example of the decals. So you can do the USS Congo, Exeter, Enterprise, Yorktown, Valiant, Hood, Potemkin, Constellation, Farragut, Excalibur, Intrepid, Republic, Constitution, and Lexington. So you can see every um, every starship in the fleet. You can do the NCC-1701 that goes on the main hull. Or you can do all the different numbers for the different starships. Same thing on the side for the, the um, work cells. And we have this that goes on the side of the secondary hull, just aft of the deflector dish housing. So, the same thing, the NCC, this, this goes on the bottom of the main hull, or the primary hull. So these, let's see, use box illustration as a guide for placement of markings. And let's see, is there a date? AMT Corporation, Nope, there's no, there's no dates per se on this. But these look like they're in pretty good shape. We could probably use these again. Um, I'm not going to build this. I just wanted the blue plastic. So those are the decals. All right, let's move on to the instructions. We've got USS Enterprise. Important, read this before you begin. You can test fit all the parts before cementing. Cement all parts, unless otherwise indicated by the instructions. Use paint and cement made for styrene plastic. Paint all assemblies before attaching the chrome parts. Well, there are no chrome parts on here. Scrape the chrome paint away from the surfaces to be cemented together. Follow all the numbers in the instruction sheet, beginning with number one. And then we move down, we've got that iconic instruction sheet and we can see the formation of the primary hull basically you've got three pieces that are going to go to start the, the foundation you've got the top piece the bottom piece and you've got the impulse engines then you add the clear parts you get the sensor dome and the bridge and we go on we do the secondary hull the top pieces of the secondary hull go together and go up inside attaching the 
primary and secondary hull. Assembly two, we can see the formation of the warp nacelles. And we're putting on the basard collectors. They call it the power dome. And you can see the, the coolant um, pipes that go on the back and on the sides. And you can see the end caps and the power unit. You can see they have, they had changed. Earlier releases actually had this part of the Bassard collector piece, but they had since changed that. And let's see, moving on to assemble three, you can see where we put the secondary hull together and we put in the, the, um, the housing for the deflector dish decals are shown on the box and of course we have that wonderful terrible stand I didn't glue mine to the stand maybe you were supposed to do that but I always wanted to take the ship off and play with it but closing the drawer in the bureau it always something happened when my ship was knocked over and broken and I had to repair it several times I'm not a big fan of that stand I love what round two does with the polar lights the uh, the half dome with the metal rod that's like the best and those are the instructions so let's put that like that all right let's put this box to the side and let's take a look at these wonderful wonderful pieces again these are still sealed i'm gonna open them because for me i'll know that everything is included Nothing will be missing if the bag sealed. All right, what do we got first? We got the bottom to the secondary hull. And look at that. I love the blue. I just love the blue. That's probably why I'm so fond of the Enterprise NCC 1701A because she has that blue that uh, color scheme. You can see a little hole where she's, it's gonna rest on the, uh, the kind of the X kind of stand. And again, mine just fell all the time. You can see the inside, they removed the, uh, from earlier releases where you would put the, the lights in, the hardware for the lights, the contacts. So that's the bottom secondary home. Again, I just love that blue. There's a couple of things that I heard about the, the blue um, plastic. Depending on what you, way you look, there are different um, pieces of information. I even read somewhere that the blue plastic was a result of them recycling all the plastic they had and it just happened to come out blue at the time. I don't know if that's true or not. You can see the um, the aft piece of the wart nacelle with the ball on um, the production series. Earlier ones had the, uh, it was like a rectangle, a roundish rectangle with the, the holes in it. And they were different from the original filming pilot. You can see there's two of those. Let me show you the other one. They came off their tree, but oh, this is actually a Bassard collector. Again, in that wonderful blue. Now, up until this point, the Bassard collectors had come as one piece, and there was the um, kind of like the fanning that was underneath the fairing, and it was one piece, but they decided to separate that so you could put a better position on it. And let's see, is this the other one? This is the other Bassard collector. Again, I just love the blue. When I find those pieces, I'll show you. We can put that to the side and let's see. Looks like we have a secondary hull. You can see the windows that, well, I hope you can see the windows that we would color either white or black. With the room lights that'll be on or off. the other half. The other half came off the tree. Well, like I 
this. I hope you can see the detail in it. The windows. We got some round windows, some rectangular rectangle windows. Let me see. I'll put the uh, the halves together. Let's see if I can show you guys. And the little little pins. It's an awkward kind of um, um, fit for the pieces because these two sections go together like this and then it uh, goes on the bottom. Love it. Love the blue. And there's something about this model that when I when I look at it, oh, that one just came off the uh, the tree as well. That I just, just I just get so excited. Right. Is this on a tree? Nope. This is one of the warp nacelles. Let's see. This could be the port. Uh, excuse me, the starboard warp nacelle. We got the chiller grill. I mean, it's attached to the uh, nacelle pylon. And it's gonna go into the slot. You guys, hopefully you can see that it's a little, it's like a slot, but it's enclosed on the inside. Where the original, this is another way you can tell, guys, the, um, the earlier releases. The section on the bottom of the nacelle pylon had an opening in it, a rectangle opening. And when you put the halves together, you would put it in to the hull and they would have a, like a pin or a separate piece that would fit and go up through the opening to hold the nacelles in place. Now they just enclosed it and that's how it goes in and that's how it'll stay in position. But that's how they used to do it with the, uh, the opening. This nacelle is still on the tree, and these are what I was telling you guys about. It goes something, something like that. So the earlier releases, these were molded as one part to go on the Dessard collector ends. It might have been a little bit better to do that because this part, the fairing, would assure that you would get it in a proper position but they ended up deciding to change that and make these separate pieces. And we got the, uh, the cooling pipes. And another way you can tell that this is the outside part and this is the port side is that there are windows on the nacelle pylon on the outside. All right, what's the next section? Looks like there's uh, another nacelle. And again, this will be the uh, the outer part of the starboard side nacelle. And you can see on this piece we have the impulse engine, and it looks like that's about to come off. And you can see. The inside part of the, the nacelle pylon that has those rectangles. And in the newer models, I believe they have decals for these, but back then you'd have to paint them. And then you can see the chiller grill on the inside. And let's see, looks like this tree has that dreaded stand. You can see the ends go into the slots and the hull would rest just like that. But again, mine would always fall over and I was always constantly fixing the nacelles it seemed. But this is one thing I don't miss about the old kit is that stand. Originally, the stand came with the, uh, it was a triangle. It was a really great stand. But then they replaced it with that one eventually. And that brings us to 
the deflector dish housing. Very, very nice. And speaking of the deflector dish, this had come off the tree, but something magical about the blue, the blue plastic was styrene, at least for me. I'm very fond of that. Let's see. Does this snap into place? Nope, this one is going to have to be glued to stay in place, but you can see how it's going to look. And here's the other end piece to the nacelle. Again, we got that blue out of the ball. And this brings me to my favorite part of the kit. This was always the part that would get me excited as soon as I opened up the box and I had seen this. And look at how awesome it looks in blue. I just love it. And there are some that say, well, you know, it's not accurate. The grid lines, um, the, the island B and C decks are not shaped properly, but this is why I love AMT kit. The kit itself is nostalgic to me. Um, it may not be perf perfectly accurate, but if you want perfect, um, if you really want it close to being as close to the original, you should go with Polar Lights, not AMT. And the 1-1000 scale and the 1350 scale Enterprise models are amazing. They're very accurate to the filming model. This one is not as accurate to the filming model, but for me it's all about nostalgia. Even including, yes, the grid lines. All right, and lastly, is that everything? Nope, we got one more piece. Let's do that one first. We got the uh, shuttle bay doors. Nice. Okay, is that everything? Yep. All right. Now we have the bottom of the primary hull, the saucer section. You can see the sensor rings. And again, these, these holes, I don't know what those are. They're probably something that was a flaw in the molding. Every time I, I built this model, I had wanted to try to fill those in and I, I just couldn't. I tried one time, I tried to use the model glue and I had filled it up with the tube glue and it, it looked terrible but now they have the putty to fill it in where you wouldn't have those like pucks. Again, I don't know if that was a, a flaw with the mold, but the rest is really beautiful and I love the way it looks in, in the blue plastic, the styrene. Let's see if we can get it together real close. Here, it just kind of clicks into place. Look at that. Man, this is exciting just looking at this. And these had come off the tree. So let me show you guys. We'll put this together real quick. It's best to line up the saucer pylon and then have everything kind of fall into place. Sort of like that. And this is going to go like that. I love it. I love it already. All right. Where did that other piece go? The bridge piece. Here it is. Yeah, I don't want it to snap in, but. Let's see if we can just kind of rest it on top. And the original release came with, with lights. So let me show you guys. Oh, that's not really um, showing. 
Yeah, there was a hole in the top of the where the bridge goes and the other one so the light could come through. But this one doesn't have that. Let's put the saucer section back together. Line up the impulse engines. So my friends, that was the blue version of the S951, molded in blue plastic. Um, I just love the, uh, the blue plastic. And when I had made it, I did not paint it white. I saw that it was blue and I absolutely loved the blue. I did paint the pieces and the different sections the way they're supposed to be painted. Um, I painted the Bassard collectors and the different pieces, the deflector dish, and a deflector dish housing, but I kept it blue. I, it was, and that was, you know, that was actually my favorite version of this model kit was the blue one. So my friends, I wanted to show you guys one that was very special to me. Again, I don't know if it's worth more money, but for me, for nostalgia's sake, this one is more valuable, just for me anyway. So I thank you for watching my friends, and until my next video, I'll see you real soon. Live long and prosper.